First of all, is it a lap that is, is that. All right. See, so you take one, Mark. How's it going, Firebase developers? Welcome to an episode of Ask Firebase, the show where we answer your burning Firebase questions. I'm your host, Jen Person, and today, for a co-host, I welcome back Malcolm Deck. Hey, everybody. Uh, my name is Malcolm. I'm still working on Firebase authentication for the Android side. Uh, really excited to talk to you today about how to best log people into your applications. Great. Yeah, so we've actually uh, gathered a whole bunch of auth questions um, when we were doing the show, and you said, like, if you have enough questions, and I was like, Oh, do I? Like, this was an easy one. I have plenty of auth questions. So, are you ready? Absolutely. Let's get started. Okay. So, our first question comes from Calendy on Twitter, who asks, does anyone know what countries the Firebase phone number authentication option works with? Absolutely. So, first of all, we try and keep this up to date on our public documentation. You can absolutely check the Firebase website to figure out which countries phone auth does and does not work for. There's a very limited subset of countries that it does not work for presently, and we're always working on expanding that list. You probably will find that it'll work for most of the places that you're interested in developing for. Now, thank you so much for your question. Are you ready for a new question? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Hi, is there any way to add multiple users at one time instead of adding one by one the users to the authentication section? Right, so this is a good question. It sounds like what you're trying to do is go into the Firebase console and add users. And that's absolutely a, a great way to work when you're first getting started with your project. But if you're trying to import a lot of user data that you already have, this is a great use case for the admin SDK, which is built exactly for this purpose. You can import uh, entire batches of users at once from a JSON file. So definitely check out our public documentation to find the specifics of that. Yeah, because you can do that uh, with or without passwords. And uh, yeah, you have a lot of different configurations you can choose. I also believe that you can uh, import users from the command line interface as I well. Think, I think so, yeah. Our next question is, what's the difference between Firebase authentication and cloud identity for customers and partners? In my understanding, they're basically the same service, but why do I have to pay for one and not the other? We may want to start by explaining what uh, cloud identity for customers and partners is, because some of our uh, viewers might not know. Right. So for those of you that are unfamiliar, cloud identity for customers and partners, or what is now called Google Cloud's identity platform, is a paid offering very similar to Firebase authentication. Um, even though the API surfaces look very similar, we've been doing a ton of behind the scenes work to be able to offer a bunch of new and better functionality to you through that product. In particular, uh, SLAs and SLOs, um, several new features that are specific to enterprise type customers, and a better integration with Google Cloud Platform. In addition to that, uh, our continued work with enterprise customers has also spurred us to work on uh, additional risk factors, uh, one of which is cross-account security. So for example, when your Google account is invalidly accessed, that'll also sign you out of any Firebase projects that you're signed into. And the only reason we can do that is because of all this behind the scene work we've been doing on Google Cloud's identity platform. Stay tuned for more information about that in the near future. Awesome. This actually leads me to another question, which is if someone is using Firebase Auth and then they find that they actually need some of these services, they, their app is growing and they realize that they want to be able to have like an SLO, is it possible to, let's say, upgrade from using uh, Firebase Auth to using Google Cloud's identity platform? Yes, that's absolutely true. That's the use case that we're trying to plan for here. You start off, you build your app, it's doing better than your wildest dreams, and you find out that you need better guarantees about availability, for example. We're trying to make that transition as easy and as seamless as possible so that you can continue to provide a great experience for your users. Yeah, that that, that actually comes up a lot is, uh, you know, developers are looking to see their app what do I do when my app is successful? How do I plan for that? How do I make sure that Firebase is going to meet my needs? And it's nice that we have uh, it, it's supported by cloud so that you know it can you know grow to whatever level they need it to. Right. I mean, I think this is the the logical roadmap. Really, you start off with a free product that makes it really easy for you to figure out if what you're building is uh, worthwhile. And as you get bigger and bigger, you're provided with more and more tools that allow you to do specifically what you need as you become really successful. All right, are you ready for another question? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, I'm really excited about this one because I didn't know the answer. If we're using Google Plus authentication in our Ionic app, will it stop working once Google Plus is deprecated in April? Right. 
So there's a lot of little pieces to this uh, question, but the big answer is no. Google Plus sign-in is the same thing as Google sign-in with an additional scope when you request that sign-in token from Google. As long as you remove that scope from your sign-in, Google sign-in will continue to work in Firebase as it did before. You just have to make sure that you remove that scope. I'm unfamiliar specifically with how you might have to do that in Ionic in particular, but I imagine there should be uh, some resources out there to help with that. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show, Malcolm. I really appreciate it. And thank all of you for your questions. We really can't make the show without you. So next time you have a query about Firebase, be sure to tag it on social media with the hashtag Ask Firebase. And who knows, maybe you'll see us answering it here on a future episode. And if you like this video, I suggest that you check out the Firebase YouTube channel to see all the other great content we have on there. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you on a future episode. There you go. We good? Okay, cool. We can do it again. I'm here all day. <laughs>